Hi everybody. I know it's been a couple months since my last video, so I figured I would come back with the continuation of a project that I started about four and a half months ago. So it was back around mid-November of 2014 that I got this project idea to use a bunch of these LED or LCD backlight panels from taking out of laptops and uh, there are their LEDs and inside the metal strips in here not CCFTs and so I got one of them right here taken out of the metal strip and I was doing a feasibility study to just to verify that the LEDs can actually maintain their brightness over a long period of time because I don't want to uh, to you know go through all the effort of producing this beautiful uh, chandelier basically I want to use these things for lighting above a dining room table or something like that and I just don't want to go through all the effort of producing that only to discover that the LEDs just lose brightness over um, you know a thousand hours or even ten thousand hours I want them to last as long as possible while still being as bright as possible so I said I was going to be running this thing for about 1,000 hours. It has now been more than 3,000 hours, which is actually better because um, running these things for longer means I'm going to get more reliable data coming out of this experiment. Anyway, I've got these two Phoenix Contact power supplies, 24 volts each, and uh, those are powering the LEDs. Um, each string, there are four individual strings of LEDs um, contained within this whole set and uh, each one has 12 LEDs per string. There we go, that's a little more clear. And um, half of them are alternating one after another on one, one half of the, the set. The other half are alternating one over the other on the other half of the set. And basically I've got them going at four different levels of current just to test them to see if they dim over time. So I've got one, one uh, t set of 12 LEDs here at 20 milliamps, another one at 10, another one at 5, and another one at roughly 0 milliamps. I've got a 1 megaohm resistor there just to, I don't know, I just didn't want to leave it completely open circuit, just have a tiny bit of current going through there but practically zero milliamps compared to everything else and now it's time to start testing these things to see how well they have maintained their brightness over a period of more than 3,000 hours now before I go disconnecting this I wanted to verify that the currents are still as I had initially designed after all this time uh, you know just in case the LEDs might um, you know their electrical characteristics might change over time. Uh, I just wanted to be 100% sure that everything is still at the same current as what I started with and indeed they are. Um, measured 20 microamps on the on the um, approximate 0 milliamp string so that's you know 0 milliamps really and 20, 10 and 5 milliamps very very close to um, what I actually measured, you know, 20.1 milliamps or something. I just measured the voltage across these resistors right here, these resistors here, and a um, and, uh, little detail, by the way, is that these resistors, I drew this wrong, these are actually down here on the cathode side of the LED strings. And also another little note is that uh, the reason I grouped them together like this with the 0 and the 20 on this half, or rather this this half of the LED string here, you can see the the spaces between these 20 milliamp LEDs is the zero milliamp LEDs, all those on one half. And then we have the, the five and 10 milliamp LEDs on that side. That's just to, uh, for, for heat dissipation. I do actually have them mounted inside the heat sinks here for these linear power supplies. So that's generating heat, and of course the LEDs themselves, they also generate heat too. And I'm just trying to keep the, the heat dissipation evenly dispersed throughout. So that's why I got the, the 0 and the 20 mixed together on one half, and then the 5 and the 10 mixed together on the other half, just to 
um, keep the heat dis dissipation as even as possible. All right, enough of this jibber jabber. Let's get down with the actual experiment here. We've got 48 volt DC supply in series with a decade resistance box. In this case, it is General Radio Company 1432M for all you vintage equipment aficionados. And then um, ammeter, of course, what I'm basically gonna do is tune the series re resistance to get exactly as close as I can get to 20 milliamps going through one of each of the four different strings of LEDs in here. So right now I've got it on the, the zero milliamp string, the one that I really didn't have powered much at all over the past four and a half months. Basically I'll be doing 20 milliamps through each of the four strings and compare brightness. I'll be measuring the brightness inside this styrofoam box with the, the light sensor taped in the center of it and the other end of that wire, oops, is right here. I got it from Electronics Express. It's a Lutron LX-107HA. That's Lutron, the cheap Chinese manufacturer of, of uh, budget measurement equipment, not Lutron, the American manufacturer of, of uh, light, light dimming, um, di dimmer switches and other lighting systems for both home and business. Anyway, this thing has four different um, light source settings for, you know, color temperature. Right now it's on tungsten sun slash 2,856 2, degrees Kelvin. Um, I'm just going to put that on number two for fluorescent because these white LEDs do have a fairly high color temperature. And um, it really doesn't matter. I mean, because this is purely a comparative um experiment here this is whatever i measure for this is going to be my control regardless of the color temperature all right so i'm going to turn off most of the ambient light in the room here and i will uh, pop this box down and i've also made sure that everything is as symmetric as possible because um, you can see only one half of this this whole string of leds is lit up but that's fine because i got this thing you know symmetrically position in that direction and tape marked on the table here just uh, so I know exactly where to put the box down so that this thing points up into the center of that thing and trust me it's it's fine the experiment is going to be as as even and and as symmetric as possible and apparently I can't be trusted because I have the uh, the zero milliamp string here with 20 milliamps going through it right now and I'm measuring 362 lux when everything is supposedly nice and centered. Now if I move this over a little bit a couple inches to the right then we get 584 lux put it back to center and then another couple inches to the left of center 470 lux so clearly that's not symmetric I'm not satisfied with this result at all okay so to solve this problem I was thinking about using the bottom part of a half gallon milk jug cut out here and then covering up the LEDs just to diffuse them diffuse the light a little bit but then that still didn't yield very good results in my opinion so what I'm really gonna do this time is this PVC pipe so what I got going on here is the LED strip is taped to the inside of this pipe it's a four inch internal diameter and the strip itself is um, well circumference wise uh, if it's a perfect circle would be three and a third inch internal diameter so it doesn't quite make it all the way around but it's good enough you know if I make everything symmetric once again should be uh, all good 
Here's a view from the top. Got the, all the LEDs down there, and if I flip to the other side, there we go. There's the other half of the, the full strip of LEDs. And I'm also going to insert this contraption here somewhere inside along the length of the pipe. It's just a plastic food container that I cut up, a white uh, translucent plastic polypropylene. There you can see the polypropylene symbol right there. Very good the diffusive plastic material and I'll just stick it inside there. Probably put it down the somewhere down the middle and uh, we'll see how that goes. Let's see how it looks from here. Oh yeah, so you can still kind of see where the LEDs are, but it's definitely a lot more diffuse now. And as for the light meter, I got the, the sensor inside of a cardboard tissue box here, which conveniently fits snugly on top of the pipe like that. And so I can get some decent measurements now they are going to be quite dim, uh, a lot dimmer than before, especially with that diffuser. I was getting, you know, 100 something lux without the diffuser. Now I'm getting 81 lux for the control. The zero milliamp one is what I've got hooked up right now. So I'll get some experimental data and see where we go from there. And here's the results. So first I did it with the diffuser in place and we got um, zero, the, the first one that was off, running at 20 milliamps, 80 lux, and then 5 milliamps at 20, 82, and then back down to 80 for the one that was running at 10 milliamps for 3,000 hours. And you know, that's all not very significant difference, it's pretty much the same. Then we get to the one that was running at 20 milliamps, and that's down to 70 lux with the diffuser. And then I took the diffuser out. I had this, the diffuser was, you know, roughly right in the middle of the, the pipe. I took it out, and everything is proportional by a factor of 1.95, roughly on average. Uh, that is, the diffuser blocked out 51% of the light. And apparently it wasn't really necessary because the pipe, the, the whole length of the pipe itself, did enough diffusing anyway. Uh, and that's, that's really good. I didn't even need any extra diffusion there. Uh, with the 48 volt supply, for these three, I needed about 530 ohms in series to get the uh, 20 milliamps going through the LEDs. Although with this one, I needed 510 ohms, had to drop that resistance down a little bit. And that could be due to the fact that it was running at a relatively high current for such a long time that it just changed the electrical characteristics of the LEDs. And in order for them to be driven at 20 milliamps, they needed to be um, biased a little bit differently. Overall, now if I'm assuming that all the four individual sets are all electrically and optically identical at the beginning of this experiment then running 3000 hours at 20 milliamps would drop the brightness from uh, the original brightness level down to 85 percent of that level over 3000 hours so it's it seems marginally viable as uh as a room lighting application and I could you know certainly make all this as uh, as a chandelier type thing um, I was thinking that maybe I would run it at 15 milliamps I tested the 10 milliamp string the the set that I was running at 10 milliamps and I tested it at 15 milliamps and I got 124 lux with uh, without the diffuser so you put eight of those together there's the eight individual panels that I plan to, to mount in a chandelier type arrangement hanging from the ceiling like that and you know 1000 lux uh, you know at least well lux is a relative measurement depending on distance um, I have yet to do any lumen calculations or measurements anyway regardless of 
the actual brightness that all these LCD backlight panels are putting out. I still plan to have some kind of extra lighting on the inside, most likely an incandescent light bulb for some good old fashioned um, yellowish light quality color temperature coming out of that because these are all going to be very high color temperature towards the bluish range and in, in most applications I would probably want to have the you know some kind of yellowish tint added into the, into there so I might have a regular white incandescent or um, maybe even a red color light bulb or a bunch of red light bulbs or a bunch of yellow light bulbs in there it all depends on what actually comes out of all these panels here you know I'd have to actually build it first to see and and mount it in in a room and see exactly what the color looks like and the brightness and all that to see what else I need to add on the inside to get a good brightness and a good color temperature so that's all I'm gonna do for this for now I expect this to be an extremely long-term project the whole point of this experiment was just to determine if a chandelier such such a lighting arrangement to light up a whole room was even a viable uh, application of these LCD backlight panels and apparently they are um, at least marginally if not enhanced by some extra lighting added on the inside and um, that's really all there is for now I mean it's probably going to be another one or two years at least before I come back to this project and actually start putting these LCD panels together to uh, see how they all fit and how bright they are and all that. That's, uh, that's as far as I'm going to come from here. As usual, there's far too many experiments to work on and um, I'm just going to cut this one off for a while and progress with some other things. So thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and I'll see you later. Bye.